What is up simmers? Welcome back to a brand new video. It's been so long and I did definitely take a hiatus off of this game because I was just stuck in this rabbit hole of people talking super negatively about the game and to be honest with you guys, given all of the bugs and stuff, I just don't really care. I love this game and I love modding it and I love seeing the things that modders do to enhance the game. But without further ado, I do have a list right here. Let me show you guys my list. I'm trying to enlarge this. This is my list of kind of fundamental mods. So I did go ahead and just completely wipe my Sims game free of any mods that I had previously. And I wanted to restart modding my game because I also wanted to show you guys any new beginners that want to play sims that want to mod your game I did want to show you guys how to do that and I did just make a quick list of things that I just really love having in my game and everything else is completely up to you I just think the most important thing here is learning how to correctly mod your game so that these things show up and don't cause issues in your game. So let me begin with showing you guys where your mods folder is. So when you open your file explorer here, let me enlarge this, you are going to go to documents and under documents it's going to be under electronic arts and you're going to press The Sims 4. You can go back and you can actually just pin this to quick access and it's gonna be right here. So you're not gonna have to keep going into documents and like go all the way through. It's just gonna be right here, it will be pinned. Now the reason that I am telling you guys about the mods folder is because this is where you're going to download and drag all of your mods into. So for example, I really like this mod like no ZZZ while sleeping and open it here. So right now I know that there are a lot of speculations regarding some malware in mods and it can be a little tough to figure out which ones are safe, which ones are not. But rest assured, like I've had these mods in my game before and they never broke my game. I'm pretty sure there's also a list stating exactly which mods are the ones that could cause viruses. And honestly, they are not mods that I would ever download for my game. So I think we're safe here. On Mod The Sims, where you're just going to download and it's going to pop up here as a zip file. I have Breeze Zip downloaded. I don't know if anyone else like has anything specific but I'm just going to go ahead and extract this. And now it just pops up like this. So we still have our mods folder open. And from here, you're just going to grab this and drag it. And now this mod is going to be in your game when you start it up. So this is one way to install mods. Mod The Sims is definitely one that I use for some tuning mods here and there. But overall, I do want to touch base on CurseForge. So CurseForge, when you download it, you can go into the home here and it automatically figures out what games that you have and what games that it does allow for you to mod. So The Sims 4 is on here and when you first install the game onto your computer and you install CurseForge, you're going to have to go up here on the three dots and press scan mods folder. So now that we scan, it's now scanned my mods folder and it sees that I have this one mod here. A lot of mods that you get from other sites might not also be on CurseForge, so you would probably have to go back on those sites and check to see if there is an update for them to update them. But otherwise, there is a ton, a ton of mods already on CurseForge that you can download that will basically automatically go into your mods folders and whenever you need to update your mods curseforge will literally show that this has an update and you can automatically update it from there also to add a lot of script mods will need the xml injector so make sure you install that as well like that's a very big one because a lot of the times when i was new to modding i would download whatever 
but it would end up not working or my game would crash or something would just go wrong. So having this is essential. A lot of mod descriptions will tell you straight up in the description, like, hey, you need XML or you need the core 51 library. And that's the way that you'll make sure that your mods all work. Now I could go through and download all of these, but I will leave this list down below in the description of just fundamental mods that I use. Um, I have made mods videos before with like a majority of these, but these are more just like things that I have to have in my game to have a more realistic gameplay. Wonderful Whims is the appropriate cousin of Wicked Whims, I wanna say, because this one has all the cool, like, nice immersive parts of Wicked Whims, minus the nudity and, like, autonomous woohoos. <laughs> but yes, I will leave this list down below. Lot 51 mods I put here, which can all be found on CurseForge. So if you just look up Lot 51, all of their mods will come up. You do need the Lot 51 core library for all of these to work. You can click through them and see which ones you care for having in your game. So everything is up for your preference and that's why I really like CurseForge because if someone wants to do like some create a sim, mods onto their game without having to scour like random websites to find cool looking CC, then this is like really quick and it's super easy. Like I literally would just have to press install and it does it for me. And what I love about this is that these two fundamental mods that I love having in my game are on CurseForge. So I don't have to go looking for it on a separate website even though like I do have the link for the actual MC command center, you can either download it from there or you can download it from here. No matter where you download it from though, CurseForge is going to recognize this mod and whenever there is an update for it, it will prompt you to update. Now moving on to something very, very important if you mod your game, and that is going to be the Sims 4 Mod Manager. When you start it up, it's going to prop this up, uh, leave it as it is, don't change anything. And this is just going to give you an overview of all the mods that you have in your game. Sims 4 Mod Manager also detects your mods and lets you know if there's an update. It is connected with CurseForge, so if you have CurseForge and you have this, you don't really need to open CurseForge necessarily because the Mod Manager is going to have the entire CurseForge interface here. What I really like about this is that it does really keep good track of your mods folder because sometimes when we have a bunch of mods in our folder, see like now all of these things that just got downloaded from me doing MC Command Center, it becomes a lot. Like already there's 20 items in here and I've only downloaded what, like three mods or four mods in total. So imagine the more you mod and the more custom content you add. And let's say like you do update a mod, but you forget to take the old one out or for some reason you didn't replace it. You will probably have like duplicate mods and it will show you here if you have it and you can delete all your duplicate mods. And that can just be accessed through tools and it has duplicate files advanced tools, any like conflicts between your mods that could be causing one to like overwrite the other or it's just both causing each other to crash. This one is a little bit more advanced, which I will now discuss with you a easier way to find out what mods are broken. And I've talked about this before, but I just feel like we really need to emphasize on the fact that there is literally a mod that you can put into your game that pops up a report after scanning your game and then it opens on your web browser telling you exactly what mods are conflicting, what mods need to be changed, updated, what mods are breaking your game. Like it will literally tell you because sometimes we'll just play the game like not knowing what's going on and then you have to play this whole guessing game in your mods folder of like, 
um, maybe it's this one. And I don't know about you guys, but I really hate having to like move my entire mods folder and like individually put things back and forth. So I'm glad that we've definitely advanced from years ago of having to like do that whole thing of just like removing everything and then one by one putting things back in and opening your game every single time to see which mod is breaking it. So just genuinely there are tools to make the game better and if you're a beginner at modding i highly recommend having these because if you don't things will start to get complicated cc will be broken you're gonna have sims walking around like the a picnic blanket you know like that red and white checkered effect with the question marks you do not want that and the last and most important thing when you open your sims 4 game you are going to press on options and go to game options scroll down to other and make sure that custom content and mods and script mods are allowed. And I would say view custom content and show at startup. A lot of people like to have that off. I personally like to have it on because it shows like what mods are there so I can kind of remember. Cause when you mod your game a lot, there's a lot that you don't remember that you have in your game. And then once you do that, exit out of your game. And now you will have this pop-up of mods that are currently running in your game. So this will show your custom content and this will show all of your script mods. And there you go. That is how you mod your game. That's gonna be it for our video today. If you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.